Monkey Trouble Grandfather bought Choo Choo from a street trainer for the sum of 10 rubies. The man had three monkeys. Choo Choo was the smallest, but the most mischievous. She was tied up most of the time. The little monkey looked so miserable with color and shame that grandfather decided it would be much happier in our home. Grandfather had weakness for keeping usual pets. It was a habit for I. At the age of eight or nine, used in courage. Grandmother at first objected to having a monkey in the house. You have enough pets as it is, she said, referring to grandfather's goat, several white mice, and a small tortoise. But I don't have any, I said. You are weak enough for two monkeys. One boy in the house all I can take. Oh, but Tutu isn't a boy, said grandfather triumphantly. This is a little girl monkey. Grandmother gave in. She had always wanted a little girl in the house. She believed girls were less troublesome than boys. Chiu Chiu was to prove her wrong. She was a pretty little monkey. Her bright eyes sparkled with mischief beneath, and her teeth, which were a pearly white, that frightened the wits out of Aunt Ruby whose nervous had already suffered from the presence of grandfather's pet python. But this was my grandparents' house, and aunts and uncles had to put up with our pets. Tutu's hands had a tried up look, as though they had been pickled in the sun for many years. One of the first things I taught her was to shake hands. And this is she insisted on doing with all who visited the house. Peppery Major Malika would have to stop and shake hands with Tutu before he could enter the drawing room. Otherwise, Tutu would climb into his shoulder and stay there roughing up his hair and playing with his mustache. Uncle Benji couldn't stand any of our pets and took a particular dislike to Tutu, who always making faces to him. But as Uncle Benji was never in a job for a long time, and dependent on grandfather's good-natured generosity. He had to shake hands with Tutu. Tutu's fingers were quick and weak, and her tail while adding to her good looks. Grandfather believed a tail would add to anyone's good looks. Also served as a third hand. She could use it to hang from a branch, and it was capable of scooping up any delicacy that might be out of reach of her hands. On one of Aunt Ruby's visits, low tracks from her bedroom brought us running to see what was wrong. It was only Tutu trying on Aunt Ruby's petticoat. They were much too large, of course. And when Aunt Ruby entered the room, all she saw was faceless white blood jumping up and down on the bed. We disentangled Tutu and soothed Aunt Ruby. 
I gave Tutu a punch of sweet pea to make her happy. Gurney didn't like anyone plucking her sweet peas, so I took some from Major Malika's garden while he was having his afternoon siesta. Then Uncle Benji complained that his hairbrush was missing. We found Tutu sunning himself on the back veranda, using the hairbrush to scratch her armpits. I took it from her and handed it back to Uncle Benji with an apology, but he flung the brush away with an oath. Such a fuss about nothing, I said. Tutu was in her fleas. No, and she bathes more often than Benji, said Grandfather, who had borrowed Aunt Ruby's shampoo to give Tutu bath. All the same grandmother objected to Tutu being given the run of the house. Tutu had to spend her nights in the outhouse. In the company of the goat, they got on quick well, and it was not long before Tutu was seen sitting comfortable on the back of the goat while the goat roomed in the back garden in search of its favorite grass. The day grandfather had to visit Merrywood to collect his railway pension. He decided to take Tutu and me along to keep us both out of mischief. He said, to prevent Tutu from wandering about on the train, causing inconvenience to passengers. She was providing with a large black traveling bag. This became her compartment. Grandfather and I paid for our seats, and we took Tutu along as hand baggage. There was enough space for Tutu to look out for the bag occasionally, and to be fed with bananas and biscuits. But she could not get her hands through the opening and canvas was too strong for her to bite her way through. Tutu's efforts to get out only had the effect of making the bag roll about on the floor, or occasionally jump into the air an exhibition that attracted curious crowd onlookers and the Dehra and Merot railway stations. Anyway, Tutu remained in the dog as far as Merot, but while Grandfather was producing our texts at the turnstile, she suddenly poked her hand out of the bag and gave the ticket collector a wide grin.